Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm so glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our EKG coding reference guide. We're here in part six, okay? And we're looking at inferior MI, okay? And in this case, we're looking at the age indeterminate form, okay? Or probably an old MI that's been present uh, for at least some time, okay? So we're gonna look at the EKG findings we see in this setting not really the acute setting more of one that's probably old uh, but we can't truly define the age of it all right so if you don't have access all you have to do is put this link into your search bar enter your email address click submit you'll get an email and in that email there will be a link for access to it okay and you'll have this go to the drop down menu and you'll be able to see obviously we have gone through all these sections here and have videos that you can go back and listen to all of them all right. Now, if you want access to our course and our uh, books and resources, okay, we have a full course from beginner to advanced. Go to www.ekg.md, okay, and click on EKG course, and there you can see all our resources, okay. Thank you for all that have supported. I know there's been thousands of you, so thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So let's get started here. Inferior MI age indeterminate or probably old. So we're not looking at something uh, so acute, okay, but one that we wanna keep in mind and make sure that, you know, it's not a new change when the patient presents. So if there's an old EKG available, we always want to look back and compare the one to the most recent. So in this inferior MI, what we want to see are pathological Q waves, okay? in at least two of those inferior leads. So two of them, and remember that the inferior leads are two, three, and AVF, okay? If we draw our quadrant system, lead two is here, lead three is here, lead AVF, okay? Notice on the inferior portion here. And if we want to say that, remember it has to be in at least two contiguous leads, so it can be in like two and AVF, Okay, you'll see, you want to see these uh, Q waves in. It could be in three in AVF or it can be in all three. Okay, technically two and three are not contiguous alone. Okay, so that's one thing to note. Now, you also want to make sure that there is no evidence of acute or evolving myocardial injury, meaning that there's no ST segment elevation. Okay, that's a really important thing when we're defining and coding this actual uh, code on the EKG. So let's look at those inferior leads again. Here's our limb leads, okay? Our inferior limb leads, two, three, and AVF, okay? So let's look at two. Notice two, you may have these small uh, Q waves there that are maybe reaching the criteria. Remember, we want the Q waves to be the width of them to be at least 30 milliseconds. If you recall, one of the small boxes is 40 milliseconds, so that width is should meet the criteria, and the depth should be at least one millimeter, okay? Maybe even deeper, but that's uh, the criteria we've been using. So we will stick to it. And the other thing we wanna note, so we looked at two, and let's look at AVF, okay? AVF, you can see these Q waves forming, okay? Notice that in two, there's no ST segment elevation, or in AVF and also in three, no ST elevation in any of these, which would you know, represent that acute or evolving myocardial injury. So you see those Q waves in three or in AVF, and then in lead three, which is this one here, okay? It's been covered up, but you can see it there. So this is lead three here. Notice these deep Q waves, okay? Quite prominent, okay? And that may suggest that that region of the heart where lead three is over may be more infarcted, okay? Look at very small positive deflections in that region compared to two, and likely that because that area is infarcted, okay? So most prominent in three, then AVF, and then lead two, which should make sense, okay? So this is an inferior MI. We're looking for the pathological Q waves. Remember, they at least they should be at least 30 milliseconds wide and 0.1 millivolts deep in amplitude, okay, or one millimeter. And if you recall, you have to find Q waves, okay? So if this is a P wave, all right, this is your QRS complex and T wave. This is an R wave. This one here is an R wave. 
this is not a Q wave, this is an S wave. Okay, so while it's deep, and that was something I initially struggled with when learning EKGs, is misclassifying S and Q wave. So I don't want you to run into that problem. So again, P wave. How would we name this? Here's our P wave. This one here is a Q wave. This one here is an R wave. This is an S wave. And then here's our T wave. Okay, so in that case, you do have a Q wave present, and that's the ones we're looking for here, okay? No initial R wave. So hopefully that makes sense. So in inferior MI, age indeterminate, probably old, you're looking for pathological Q waves in the inferior leads, in the contiguous leads, at least two of them, and no evidence of acute or evolving myocardial injury. In other words, no ST segment elevation in those leads. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So 
Uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.